what does this airplane, this airplane, and this airplane all have in common? Let's find out on Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. What these three diverse aircraft have in common is they all share the same turboprop engine. What's a turboprop engine? Well, the short answer is it's a jet engine mated to a propeller. And here we see a turboprop. There are many advantages, mainly faster speed than with a piston engine aircraft, and yet with lower operating costs than a jet. It's kind of the sweet spot, happy medium. This particular engine is a trick question in our Name the Plane contest because the spinner, prop, and cowling that you see there uh, are fitted to any number of different aircraft. But we're looking at the Rolls-Royce Dart, the world's first mass production turboprop engine. Now, when you look at British airliners, uh, it's quite an impressive list. These are some of the most uh, beautiful and successful airliners, if not aircraft, ever built. And there were many pioneering firsts. The first jet airliner, the world's first jet airline network in the Eastern Hemisphere in 1952. But five years before that was the Rolls-Royce Dart. The RB-53 Dart engine, a turboprop that was first run in 1946, was initially rated at 890 shaft horsepower. The engine was first flown mounted to the nose of a converted World War II Avro Lancaster in October 1947. Let's look at some other in-flight test beds. We had the Vickers Wellington, the Airspeed Ambassador, and this is a one-of-a-kind airplane uh, shown there at lower right. Uh, it's shown fitted with Napier Elan turboshaft engines, later tested with Rolls-Royce darts. And of course, the Douglas Dakota, English DC-3. Uh, this actually served in service with uh, airmail and freight and was a really pioneering airplane. Did you know that Dakota is actually an acronym? DACO is the radio call sign for all Douglas flight test aircraft here in the United States. It stands for Douglas Aircraft Company. Well, if you add transport airplane, you have that, which becomes Dakota. And in a turboprop configuration, it was called the Pioneer. Improvements in production engines boosted power up to 1,400 shaft horsepower, and eventually as much as 3,245 shaft horsepower with water injection. Approximately 7,100 Dart engines were produced and have flown more than 170 million hours in airline and military service. But let's go back to the beginning, 1948, when the Rolls-Royce Darts powered the Vickers Viscount on its maiden flight. Here's a uh, promotional poster, really quite beautiful, uh, showing the uh, new airline airliner in British European Airways markings. And of course, you had to have a Rolls-Royce on the ramp. On July 29, 1950, a British European Airways Viscount 600 carried 14 paying passengers between London and Paris, the first scheduled airline flight by a turbine-powered aircraft. Regular passenger flights were launched by BEA Viscounts in April of 1953, becoming the world's first scheduled turboprop airline service. In October 1953, the Viscount 700 prototype entered the London-New Zealand Air Race, which was won by an English electric Canberra jet. However, the Viscount achieved the fastest time in the transport category, covering more than 12,000 miles or 20,000 kilometers from London to Christchurch, New, New Zealand in just under 41 hours. The Viscount technically crossed the finish line first, but a passenger carrying KLM Douglas DC-6 won the race because the Viscount was flown empty and carried extra fuel tanks in its cabin. Now look at this photo. This is just exquisite engineering. I could just see that uh, nacelle on display 
on the wall in the Museum of Modern Art in New York is a piece of industrial sculpture. Just outstanding. And a big feature of the Viscount was the big oval picture window. Uh, really a, a, a great appeal for passengers. Compare the size of that window to a Douglas DC-6. You can see the difference. The first turboprop airline service in North America was flown by TransCanada Airlines in 1954. This was followed by Capital Airlines with the Viscount 700, and later Continental Airlines flying the stretched and more powerful Viscount 810. With its uprated Dart engines, the 810 cruised at 400 miles per hour. Another four-engine Dart-powered aircraft is the uh, Armstrong Whitworth Argosy. This was a general-purpose turboprop transport for both military and commercial operations. We're going to see a military variant in a few moments. Designed mainly as a freighter, the Argosy was also offered with a convertible cabin for carrying both freight and passengers. And that aircraft could carry up to 80 passengers with comparable performance to the Viscount. Let's look at some military aircraft powered by the Dart engine. Now, before there was a Beechcraft Turbo Mentor or a T-6 Texan II or an Embraer Tucano, there was the Avro Athena T Mark 1A in 1948, world's first turboprop trainer. The Breguet Alizé, French Navy anti-submarine warfare aircraft. The Hawker Sidley Andover. This is a uh, military version of a passenger airplane we're going to see in a moment. And the uh, CC-2 was the standard fuselage. This is actually the Hawker Sidley HS-748. But the C-1 uh, that you see there at bottom had a cargo ramp and a unique kneeling landing gear that could lower that ramp to the ground. Here we see the Argosy again in military markings, the C model Mark I. And what is this? The Cavalier Mustang was a post-World War II civilian modified version of the North American P-51 that you see at upper left. It was originally intended as a high-speed personal aircraft, as well as for export use and close air support for third world air forces. In 1968, Cavalier mated a Rolls-Royce Dart 510 turboprop to the Mustang II airframe. This became the Turbo Mustang III, which had radically increased performance and payload, yet with reduced maintenance costs due to the turbine engine. However, neither the U.S. military, military nor any foreign operator purchased the airplane, so the Turbo Mustang project, now called the Enforcer, was sold to Piper Aircraft for mass production, in 1971, but only four were built. Let's look at some high-wing twin-engine airliners powered by the Dart engine. We have the Hanley Page Herald, really elegant-looking airplane. And I bet you're wondering, well, wait a minute, if the engine's that high off the ground, what do they do for maintenance? Well, much like the Viscount uh, nacelle, the, uh, uh, this uh, airplane has a, a flower petal design that opens up. And you can see the uh, maintenance operator there on a ladder. For heavy maintenance, there were work stands in a hangar. But here we see the Fokker F-27 Friendship, twin turboprop. It was built in the United States under license by Fairchild. And Fairchild Hiller created the stretched, improved FH-227. Uh, you can tell the Fairchild-built airplanes mainly by the integral air stair that you see folded out at the rear fuselage in this photo. Wait a minute, where have I seen something like this before? Oh yeah, I thought so. And here you can see a Fokker airplane because it has the uh, uh, missing fold out air stair. And so they're using uh, roll up stairs here at LAX. And of course, being an airliner geek, I had to sit at the window in that Swift Air airplane and uh, take the obligatory photo of the landing gear. Sorry about that. We have some low-wing twin-engine airliners as well, the Hawker Sidley HS-748. And the Convair liners, which were piston-powered airplanes that flew in the early 50s, were converted to turboprops. This is a 580 model powered by the Allison 501 engine, which is the same engine as the Lockheed Electra. 
but the Rolls-Royce dark-powered Convairs were the 600 series. Here we have the Japanese YS-11, an amazing airplane. I uh, was privileged to fly on this machine in the late 1960s in Japan. I sat at the window and uh, watched the runway markers go by on takeoff, fully loaded. We were off the ground in 1,800 feet, an amazing airplane. Here's a combi version, like the Argosy. This is a combination freight in the forward fuselage and passengers in the rear fuselage. And then there's the Aviation Traders Accountant. This was a British 28-passenger turboprop built by Aviation Traders, one of the many designs intended as a Douglas DC-3 replacement. It first flew in July 1957, and although displayed at the Farnborough Air Show that same year, the airplane simply could not compete with the more advanced designs from many other manufacturers around the world, and so development was canceled. Now, if that name sounds familiar, Aviation Traders also converted Douglas DC-4s into auto transports flown throughout Europe in 1961. I took this photo at Long Beach, California, 20 years later. And the mastermind behind this innovative and pioneering airline and aircraft engineering group was none other than Sir Freddie Laker. Were there any dark-powered executive aircraft? Why, yes. And the most famous was the Grumman Gulfstream. Here we see the Gulfstream over Fire Island uh, on the south shore of Long Island, New York. That's the Great South Bay on the left and the Atlantic Ocean on the right. But what a beautifully proportioned airplane. First flown on August 14th, 1958. The Gulfstream uh, cabin uh, replicated the DC-3, basically, uh, but with uh, fewer seats, obviously, for executive configuration, and became a very successful airplane. Perhaps the most famous Gulfstream would be uh, this one, November 234 Mike Mike, which was owned by Walt Disney and carried the uh, very impressive radio call sign, Mickey One. It's currently on display at Disney World in Orlando, Florida. So there you have it, a quick look at the Rolls-Royce Dart engine and the great airplanes that were powered by that uh, famous power plant. I'd like to thank the special people who helped make these presentations possible. And thank you so much for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. It's a pleasure bringing these programs to you, and we appreciate your watching them. Please do hit the like button on the way out. If you haven't subscribed, we'd appreciate having you on board. And as always, until next time, take care.